ghostly horrors in Malakanam. I never believed in ghosts until I stepped foot into Malakanam Palace. As a historian, I was thrilled to be given special access to explore its hallowed halls, but little did I know the horrors that awaited me. The first night, I sensed an eerie presence in the air. The palace seemed to come alive with whispers and faint footsteps. As I wandered through its opulent rooms, an icy hand touched my shoulder, sending shivers down my spine. I turned around to find no one there, but I could feel an unseen entity With each passing night, watching my encounters move. grew more intense. A shadowy figure appeared at the end of dimly lit corridors, disappearing into thin air when I approached. Strange noises echoed through the empty rooms, like mournful cries and agonized wails. The portraits on the walls seemed to follow me with their haunting gazes. I delved into the palace's history, seeking answers to the malevolent presence that gripped the place. It was said that the spirits of past leaders who met untimely and tragic ends still roamed its halls. From assassinated presidents to those who faced a gruesome fate, their tormented souls were said to linger, unable to find peace. Among the most infamous spirits was that of a betrayed first lady who took her own life after her husband's infidelity came to light. Her ghost was said to appear in a flowing white gown, weeping silently as she wandered through the rooms she once called home. Another ghostly tale revolved around a former president who was assassinated during a coup attempt. Witnesses claimed to hear his final speech echo through the corridors during the anniversary of his death, filled with anger and despair. As I continued my research, I stumbled upon an old diary hidden in the depths of the palace library. It belonged to a servant who had served during a time of political unrest. The entries revealed chilling accounts of strange occurrences, objects moving on their own, doors slamming shut, and an overwhelming sense of dread that engulfed the staff. Night after night, I would experience these terrifying encounters firsthand. One evening, while trying to capture evidence of the paranormal, I felt a cold breath on my neck, accompanied by unintelligible whispers. My heart pounded as I struggled to maintain composure. In my desperation to find a way to appease these tortured souls, I sought the help of a local medium. She performed a seance in the palace, attempting to communicate with the spirits. During the ritual, the atmosphere grew heavy and the temperature plummeted. The medium spoke in hushed tones, relaying messages from the other side. The spirits, it seemed, wanted their stories to be heard, their grievances acknowledged. They yearned for justice and closure, their restless souls bound to the very fabric of the palace. Moved by their sorrow, I vowed to share their forgotten tales with the world, to give them the recognition they sought. As I documented their stories and shared them with the public, the paranormal encounters began to dwindle. It was as if the spirits found solace in having their voices heard. The palace gradually regained its tranquility and the oppressive air of fear lifted. My experiences in Malakanang Palace left an indelible mark on me. I now know that there are forces beyond our comprehension, and the souls of the departed may remain among us, seeking resolution. The haunted halls of the palace will forever serve as a reminder of the tragic history that shaped its legacy, a chilling testament to the ghosts that haunt us stills.